Build it right, be safe, be competent. In my early 20s, I worked with my uncle, had a wrecker service. That's when I learned that chains are king. He used J hooks to hook under the car. He had devices that hooked on the frame so he could hook onto it. He didn't hook onto the bumper and tear the bumpers off. Later on in life, I went to work for New Newport Shipyard, Newport, Rhode Island, as an outside machinist, and I had to work with the people that did the heavy lifting in order to for me to coop. So what happens is, here again, the shipyard used chains. The only thing that the, that wasn't a chain that they allow you to use was a sling. The riggers explained to me why they do what they are. So once I learned the proper chains, the proper hooks and everything to work with the riggers, later on it, I got out, I found out, I got equipment, it goes on equipment trailers, I need to boomer down. So you got different types of boomers. You got this type, you got the ratchet type or whatever. I encountered a problem several times. I'd have a chain too long for me to use the hooks on each end. So if I had a 20 foot chain and I only needed a 15 foot reach, I hooked it on appropriate ends on both of them. Shorten the chain this way. What happens is, so I made my own. A bunch of them, different lengths. You made the appropriate size for the chain you was working with. That way, this is a 20 foot chain. A lot of times I want to use a lightweight chain that only reached six or seven feet. I didn't go cut another chain. I used to, if I cut a chain before for a custom job, I'd put hooks on them like you see here. Found out that now I got a lot of short chains that don't do much work. So here again, later on in life, I still use these that have come along with a, a ratchet binder. A ratchet binder is far superior to a regular chain binder. All in equipment. I made custom chains because I hauled the same piece of gear year after year. I didn't want a lot of chain on the trailer. You hook this appropriate place, hook it on your stuff, just long enough to put a chain binder in there. Sometimes that chain binder was about that long, and you wrapped it up. You didn't have eight feet of chain out there to do something weird with it. When I found out on one or two occasions, my hook dropped off before I put it under load, so I started using zip ties to keep the hook from coming off the chain when it went under a load. Now, here again, you use the right chain for the job. These right here, anything under 600 pounds, I'll use one of these. 2,000 to 3,000, use one of those. It's over 3,000. I use one of those. Now, the thing is with the chain, you see what, what job you gotta do. Does it require a log chain? I got some log chains that's about twice this strong. What you end up doing, you mark the chains, three eighths, five sixteenths, five eighths. When you need the chain, you just pull it out of the bucket. No mine. So in my experience, chains are still king on occasions. If I'm moving a lawnmower, I don't need a chain and a chain binder. I use a ratchet strap, all of them custom made for one job only. If I need two four footers for the lawnmower and two eight footers, I custom make them. 
So what happens is on straps, here again, each of them got a working load range. Some of them get pretty heavy duty. If I have to use that heavy duty when it's gonna be an odd load that I can't afford to put a chain on it and tear it up, I use a strap. Otherwise, everything is done with chains. In the shipyard, if you need to position something aboard the ship after it was in there, you didn't use a cable come along because they wasn't allowed. You used a chain come along, far superior. In some of my other videos, you've seen me use a yellow chain come along to put an object in a bucket on my tractor. This is part of my arsenal for doing the job that I had to do at the present time and in the, I use it in the future as well. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Thank you.